Hi there, welcome to the latest episode of my 10 minute moan. And the topic in this 10 minute moan has got to be one of the most ridiculous stories I've heard since the new hate bill, hate crime act, um, became law. This is a mad story that you've probably no doubt already heard of. Morag Brown, woman in her 70s, being arrested under, apparently, under hate crime laws, although the police did contradict that later on. So I'm just going to use the Scottish Daily Express um, to give you most of the details on their story that they published today. And their headline is, Fears the SMP hate crime law has been exploited after pensioner arrested and carted off to a police station. Morag McDougall-Brown was left traumatised after being taken to Kilmarnock Police Station for questioning after she was falsely accused of directing a neighbourist slur at a nightmare neighbour who was attacking her rosebush. Now, the story goes, a Scottish M Tory MP, MSP has warned that people are exploiting the new hate crime act after a pensioner was wrongly arrested on the word of a nightmare neighbour in Troon. Morag McDougall Brown, 74, says she and others in the street have endured years of abuse as a result of a bitter dispute. On Tuesday, the mild-mannered OAP says she spotted the woman damaging a rose bush in her back garden and took a photo out of her window on her mobile phone. Shortly afterwards, she was stunned to find two police officers at a front door at Harbour Road in the South Ayrshire seaside town. She was arrested and taken away in a police van for questioning at Kilmarnock Police Station, with the apologetic officers saying she would be put in handcuffs if she refused. I take it that's if she refused to go. Mrs Brown asked why she couldn't be interviewed in her own home and was told it was due to the new law that came in on April 1st. She also says she was not told that she was being arrested, what she was being arrested for until she arrived at the police station. At that stage, it became clear the neighbour had called the police and accused Mrs Brown of calling her a simple mongo, an offensive term for somebody with Down syndrome and therefore falling under one of the protected characteristics in the new hate crime act. However, Police Scotland have insisted Mrs Brown was arrested under Section 38 of the Criminal Justice and Licensing Scotland Act 2010, which relates to threatening or abusive behaviour. Speaking to the Scottish Express, Mrs. Mrs. Brown said, We've had 42 instances of antisocial behaviour involving this neighbour. So when the two police officers turned up at the door, I actually recognised them both. They said they were there, said there's been an allegation, we can't tell you what it is, but you need to accompany us to the police station. They said that because of the new law that came in on April the 1st, I couldn't be questioned in my own home. That's interesting. They were very nice and agreed to go and wait for me in the van so I wouldn't look as if, as though I was being taken out of the house. Then I was driven through Troon in the back of a police van. I've never been in a police van in my life. I phoned my daughter and she arranged for me to get a lawyer. They were all very nice at the police station too, asking if I was okay, but they took my jewellery, switched off my phone and searched me. At that stage, I still didn't know what this was all about. I was asked if I had seen her in the garden and I said yes. She was throwing rubbish and trying to cut down my rosebush. I took a photograph, but I didn't speak to her at all. I haven't spoken to her in months. They said there's no charge, no criminal record and you're free to go. My daughter was waiting outside, but I am still traumatised by the whole thing. This law is proving to be a disaster and should be scrapped. It was as if I was a criminal. It was just awful. If they'd questioned me at home, that would have been fine. I could have told the truth and said I hadn't used those words. I hadn't even spoken to her. Then we go on to some quotes from some MPs, etc. But I think the words are uh, more ag speak more 
in the words of any MPs, etc. Now, a police spokesman said a 74-year-old woman was arrested on Tuesday, the 9th of April, 2024, in connection with a report of verbal abuse in the Harbour Road area of Troon on Monday, the 8th of April, 2024. She was released without charge. A source told The Express the arrested party was taken to the police station to be questioned as normal procedure to allow an arrested person solicitor access prior to the interview. The offence was AS34, sorry, 38, CJLSA 2010, and the fact she was taken to the police station therefore nothing to do with the new hate crime act. Well, I think that's a bit interesting, the fact that um, the woman appears to have been told one thing by the police officers that arrested her, and the police spokesperson saying a completely different thing after the fact. Now, I was kind enough to uh, be given Morag's phone number earlier on today, and I had a lovely chat with her um, this morning, sorry, about lunchtime. I'm going to try and set up um, a meeting with her to go down and speak to her, and hopefully... Um, she's comfortable with that, or I certainly wouldn't be doing it if she's not comfortable going on camera. But I just think this is frightening. I think it's a horrific situation. It's the sort of thing that everybody who spoke out about the Hate Crime Act prior to the 1st of April was trying to explain to people that if you fall out with somebody, the, the, the ability to just make up nonsense, and the police have already verified that they will um, act on every single complaint and investigate every single complaint leaves the law wide open for this sort of ridiculous thing. What I'd really like to find out is why the police seem to have changed their opinion on the actual alleged crime where when they've arrested Morag they seem to be suggesting that it was hate crime related but since then they seem quite keen to put it down as a section 38. That, I would like to understand what's happening here. It might be um, good reason for it. They might be trying to protect Morag, if I'm honest with you. It could be that the way it's reported, non-crime hate act, um, if they had you know, kept it as a hate act report, might have had to do one thing with the complaint once they found no criminality, where if it had been a Section 38, there might be a different process. So it's not entirely um, guaranteed that you know changing the, the law that they've arrested her under is a bad thing. I don't know, but I will certainly take advice on that and look into it, not just for my own curiosity, but you know for more eggs as well, because it must be quite confusing being 74-year-old and not only arrested at your house for something you evidently didn't do, but then have this confusion of hate crime act, the thing that came in on the 1st of April and now been told it's a section 38. So maybe if I can find out more about that, it might help uh, not only my own curiosity, but it might help Morag as well. Um, and as I said, a lovely conversation with her earlier, and thank you for the people who managed to put me in touch with Morag. But this is a story that I think does deserve far more coverage than it's even received just now, which has been quite wonderful because when I was on the phone to Morag, she said that there was other news outlets expecting to phone her later on today. So those calls might have happened. And hopefully, as long as she's willing to do so, hopefully her story gets even more coverage because I certainly believe it deserves so. And um, if I can help in any small way with that, I'll certainly do so. But even if Morag was to change her mind, she wasn't comfortable, maybe her family thinks she's done enough stuff to camera and etc. then that, you know, I would I would totally respect that. Um and regardless of whether we get Morag on to do a podcast or not, I'll certainly be doing more to try and get to the bottom of this story and in and in particularly the bit where it seems to have changed from a hate crime to a uh, section thirty eight. So stay tuned because this will not be the last you hear about this story from myself and as long as Morag's still comfortable uh, in the next couple of days to sit down with a camera in front of her and tell a story, then hopefully we'll be delivering that within the next 24 to 48 hours, okay? Um, so if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you've not already done so, get involved in the comments below, but most importantly of all, unless your hums are Yusuf, 
SNP, or of any of the idiots that thought this law was a good idea. For everybody else, have a great day. Cheerio, bye now.